Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Graham Eccles, and I'm from Checkware. Um, with my colleague here today, Tom, who's sat at the front, um, he's here to replace me should I uh, spontaneously combust in this heat and sunshine. Believe it or not, being ginger does have a few disadvantages, so uh, let's hope I don't. But before I start, I'm here to say we're not an app, we are an online application. So this isn't something you download from, from an app store. This is provided as a software, as a service. And if there are any uh, concerns or questions around information governance or security or standards, um, let me just put those to bed now and say we've dealt with all the ones that we need to deal with. And if somebody's really uptight about it, then they can print the information off, put it in an envelope and post it out to somebody. Um, <laughs> OK, so. Let's kick off. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. This is the right way. So, we are a new company into the UK. We launched into the UK in uh, January of this year. But we've got some history. We're actually a Norwegian company. We started back in 2007 in Norway. Um, we've grown uh, with over 150 customers right now. Um, but we decided to, to launch into the UK. We, we saw this as um, an exciting and difficult nut to crack. So some of the, uh, the numbers that you see here, some of the, the, the quotes, are coming from some of our uh, real customers in Norway. But healthcare is healthcare, mental healthcare is mental healthcare, and they should all marry up. Just press the return key. I'll click OK. So, the current assessment process as it, as it happens today uh, with psychometric testing, it's very much paper-based. It's carried out by clinicians with the service users on clipboards, on pads, completed, and then those are sent away and they're scored. There's an element of time taken to actually score those tests. And then they're reported on. So the reports then come back to the clinician at some, at some stage. That might, might be a matter of minutes, it might be hours, it might be weeks, it might be months. They may even lose the test and have to duplicate the test again, which would mean another appointment, another test, another set of scoring. So let's look at some of the problems with that. It is very much a manual process, which is slow and creates delays. You've got elements of data quality here, especially if you're duplicating the data. And the history of the patient isn't always with that clinician who's carrying out that, that uh, assessment. Maybe it's within a, a chunky paper folder somewhere, but it's not presenting as, as information that's, uh, that's handy. It also begs the question of the version validity of the test that's being used. Um, uh, it could be that... Um, a pad of psychometric tests hadn't been ordered, so therefore somebody had ripped one off and photocopied a spare 100, um, breaching copyright rules, um, and also not really adhering to, to the versions that have possibly been set by, uh, by that particular trust. So we've, we've developed uh, an electronic solution which simplifies the collection reporting, uh, as a collection and reporting of, of clinical information. If we look at the online assessments first, we have a vault or a database of over 400 um, psychometric uh, tests and instruments. And they're available to all of the customers to, uh, you know, to, to use and they've got access to those online. Our customers also have the ability with, the, with software to actually create their own do-it-yourself forms. So whether that's patient satisfaction, patient experience, but you've got the ability to actually create forms yourself within, the, within a solution. The idea of making this solution available and to digitise psychometric testing is to make it faster, easy to do and more secure. So, as soon as you complete those tests, you're presented with a scored report. Now, something which is, is quite unique because, as I said earlier, this can take a matter of time, weeks, days, minutes, to actually get this information back 
um, and in a in a format that's presented in a in such a credible way. Now, this is just a just a, a standard report, but these blue lines here and here and here show some normative data, data ranges. So quite quickly, you can see areas which fall outside of those nor, uh, normative data ranges, and they may require uh, another clinical intervention of some kind. Furthermore, there's some red asterisks here and here, and that's data that could alert another service to actually become involved within that um, um, healthcare pathway for, for that service user. If this was um, a patient presenting with um, depression, it could be showing suicidal tendencies, and automatically you can flag up to services that can intervene immediately. So we've taken a very conservative view on how long it actually takes to perform a test and then to score a test and to report on that data. And, um, you know, just taking a quote there, going paperless would save the NHS billions. I think we're all pretty much a fan of that in this room and we all know it's, it, it's true. But if we, if we forget about this, uh, this manual completion, because you've, you've still got to complete the test online. Um, as you do on a in paper at the moment. But the scoring of the test manually, we've said, look, it could take about 10 minutes. And the inputting of that data into a report could take a further five minutes. So you know, we're just looking at a very conservative figure of, of 15 minutes there. If you just take one consultant across a mental health organisation with 300 service users, now if those 300 service users only ever had five tests carried out per year, 375 hours. If there's 60 consultants within your mental health organisation, it's 22,500 hours a year of scoring and reporting of, of the data. Again, an average salary of a mental health professional at 33,000, you do the maths here, and you're looking at a figure of almost half a million pounds of almost administration time that very high. Uh, highly paid and skilled professional is currently doing. So let's look at how to make this system more efficient by introducing technologies. So you, not only do you become more efficient, but you get better informed clinicians because they're having the data presented to them rather than going away and collecting it themselves to then look at in, uh, in, in future weeks. You're integrated to the electronic patient record as well which is an advantage because you're sharing information across boundaries and you're allowing healthcare professionals, possibly social care as well, you're integrating and creating a holistic approach and therefore this is all about improving healthcare for the service user and how do you do that and share data. This is a question we ask of every single one of our, of our customers, how do they link their current assessments into, into care pathways. Well, within an electronic solution like this, you can create an assessment plan. Now, in that assessment plan, you can have everything from an initial assessment to the actual assessments themselves, to a period of time that elapses where you then follow up the assessments to actually benchmark and, and understand the data uh, from pre and post. Treatment, and then you can have a follow-up, a, a follow-up follow form. So, the patient experience or a, or a satisfaction survey, which is more and more being asked for throughout many, many services, and that's where some additional points are going to be scored, and therefore additional services and revenue can be generated. So, what's the other advantage of having an electronic assessment plan with your with, with your assessments? Um, attached to your care pathway. Well, you can trigger out and you can send text messages to the patients to allow them to, you know, to, to follow up on repeated assessments, to actually complete their assessments online at home or whether they're in a care environment. And if you can introduce an electronic system like that, then Research suggests that you can save about one third of face-to-face -face, uh, consultations, which may sound quite good, but when you start to look at 
when you start to look at figures, that one third of face-to-face -face consultant time adds up to be quite a quite a decent amount of uh, decent amount of money. So this isn't about completely taking away the contact between service user and clinician. This is about empowering the clinician and empowering the patient to have a better quality of the of the healthcare they get. So yeah, if you if you look at a doctor and you know the, the cost the cost of patient time two hundred and eighty three pounds that's the, the information we found from, the, from this research down here, and an, an estimated appointment time of 30 minutes. Well, the average number of outpatient appointments across a trust in a year is 45,000. So if we can reduce that by 15,000 appointments, reducing 7,500 hours, do some maths, and you've got a total saving to, to a trust of over two million pounds. Significant numbers when you're talking about just taking out 15 minutes of scoring and reporting and reducing contact of clinic time by, by a third. So, you're able to standardise the assessments per pathway. I know standards, <laughs> this is the 15th standard I think you were talking about, 16th. Uh, standards are standards, the standards are there. Uh, you know, to, to, to help improve uh, healthcare in, in this instance. But you also have the flexibility to, to actually put your clinical expertise and go off piste. But if you can use a set number of assessments for certain services, then we can do so. You remove the manual management of assessments and you reduce the number of visits to clinic. Uh, this last section the outcome reporting, I think, is becoming more and more. Certainly, certainly more and more debate is being uh, is being raised around this, and and this um, this kind of dashboard approach to reporting the outcomes in in mental health is being really well accepted amongst the conversations we're having. So being able to aggregate data, so not just looking at individual patients. But being able to aggregate data per service, per team, or per clinician, or per geography, whatever it may be, you're able to have a set of dashboard instruments that present in real time, because you're scoring and reporting in real time, to actually show you where the service users are and what's happening. Why is this good? Well, it allows you to measure treatment outcome and efficacy. And if we just take one quick example here. This is a simple, simple bar chart of patients with depression that were um, uh, on, on leave from work due to their, um, their, their clinical uh, depression. So this is pre and post treatment. So you start to get an idea of, okay, there's a bit of effectiveness there of what we've done, but let's look into that deeper. Well, you can start to see the age ranges of the service users that were actually within this study. And you can see that actually at the under 20s, there was no change at all. Yet in the 51 to 60, there was a change. So that prompts you to then go away, research, and ask the questions, why have you got such a big difference in the, in the treatment given to these ranges? You go even deeper and start to look at by clinician, or by service, or by clinic, or by geography, to actually understand which areas are, are, are getting the best results from their treatments. Our system is used by clinicians, it's also used by researchers. And this kind of information presenting and allowing you to benchmark and understand and drill down what's happening across services is vital in research and clinical practice to understand how to make a difference to your healthcare to input back into the, the service user. Does it support PBR? Well, if you can improve outcomes, then feedback we're getting is a yes, because payment by results and you are understanding where you can make the improvements and generate higher results, then it's going to be more points, which is more prizes. So, to help you understand where certain treatments are, are falling down, you're able to, and because this is electronic, you're able to actually audit as to which routines have been followed and by who, and when certain assessments were carried out. 
So no longer do you have to trail through paper, you know, piles and piles of paper to understand was this done on time, was it lost, who did it, when did they do it. You can just have the information to hand. I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's, it's priceless. If we just look at the, the overall effects that making a mental health solution electronic, you improve the quality of care. You're getting better data and quicker. You're measuring the treatment outcomes, so therefore you're able to encourage positive changes. You're delivering efficiencies, not only in time, but in money. You remove the manual effort, so you're allowing people to take on more services, be more productive, and generate um, a you know, more positive healthcare outcome. Probably under 20 minutes, but I was feeling myself getting a bit hot. I didn't want to set on fire. That's my contact details. I'm open to questions either now or at the end. Yeah, if anybody's got any burning questions, we'll take them now, and then we can pick up some of the issues, I think, in the session afterwards. Does anybody want to ask a question? I'll throw one in. You made a statement about integration with the electronic health record, which is quite a big claim to make, because it can't be true. What do you mean by that exactly? What's the electronic health record? It means... <laughs> Who and where? Yeah, well, um, it's a statement to say, look, this isn't just a system that can be... That, that is designed to be out there on its own. This is a system where we have desires and ambition to integrate with the EPRs that are out there because we can, we can see the benefit in doing that. Um, so as and when the time comes when we get the first contract signed in the UK and they want that integration, that's when we need to have those sensible conversations. So, but it's about sharing the data. Just I think as an, as an addition to that, it, it's in Norway where we're from, it's something that we've done with a, I think it's about 10 different systems of different sorts, so it's something that we, we, we want to be doing. But it's yeah, I mean, I think it goes back to the point I was making in my presentation, to get the maximum out of this stuff, because I think there's all sorts of stuff there. And having seen, had some first-hand experience of how appalling that manual process is around psychometrics, you know, that's a massive step forward. Um, but to get real benefits, you have to better fully integrate it to what else is going on as we move towards this sort of digital world. And I think, you know, it, it's a great step and a great start. So thank you for your presentation. We'll pick up some of the issues there later.